Hi, and good morning wherever you are, because where I am, it's very early in the morning, it's very chilly. With me today, it's between a rock and a hard place, Aaron Fralston. This is still Idexel International IGCSE, English Language A, especially for those students who are preparing for this, to sit for these May coming exams. Brace yourself. Buckle up as I take you through exam style prompt and examiner's expectations of you. So we're going to respond and be able also to explain on the analysis on how writers usually use language and structure to convey uh, various aspects. For example, in this case, and also working on the premise that you've read the text and you've already uh, uh, read the text at your own uh, time and that is exactly the premise that I'm going to work on pre-assuming that you've read the text otherwise what I'll be saying here won't be relevant so Between a Rock and Hard Place is, a, is an autobiographical text done by Aaron Ralston and of course I'll forgo the background because that is for later so what are some of the responses that explain and analyze how the writer uses language and structure to convey the difficulties that he faces? Responses that explain how the writer uses language and structure to convey the difficulties that he faces. So the first part there, the use of the present tense throughout the extract conveys a sense of immediacy and so heightens the reader's awareness of the difficulties that the writer faces. Measurements are given right at the start of the extract to show the difficulty of the drop off and calculate the height, and I quote, maybe 11 or 12 feet high. The adjective claustrophobic, it emphasizes how cramped the, the space is. And also the contrast of verbs in and I quote, instead of the words widening or opening, there's a contrast between widening or opening. And here, the slot narrows. So there's, instead of widening, opening, contrasting with slot narrows, it narrows right there. It serves to enhance, enhance just how unusually tight the space is. Uh... When explaining that the techniques that might be used to cross the gap are sometimes possible, it is suggests his uncertainty as to whether they will work in this instance. The use of colloquial analogy when likening the size of a chokestone to the size of a large bus tire ensures that the readers get a sense of just how big the boulder is. Equally employing the verb Teeters to indicate how the chalkstone moves under his weight conveys how precarious his situation is. Describing his descent, that is dropping down or coming down, his descent as akin to climbing down the roof of a house means that non experts experts rather can understand the hazardous, hazardous rather nature of the situation. The asanas in the phrase scrapping quake and the alliteration of the harsh sound highlights the noise and movement of the stone and imply danger the placement of the abstract nouns fear and my only hope so we have fear there and my my only hope at the start of the sentence shows how these are his primary thoughts the reference to the slowing down of time and the alliteration used to link how it dilates and his reactions consequently decelerate helps convey the sense of horror. There is the long complex sentence beginning in slow motion with its multiple clauses seems to mimic the actual slow motion of the event and enhances the sense of pain or panic rather. And there's an idea of the formidable force of the rock which hits the, writers, the writer is given by the selection of powerful verbs used to describe the action. Smashes, yank, ricochets, crushes, 
and snares and also tearing. The use of short sentence, then silence, concludes the sixth paragraph providing a stark contrast to the noise and action of the accident and highlights the writer's isolation. The apparent impossibility of being able to, able to release himself is clearly established by the description of his arm vanishing into an implausibly small gap. gap. The phrases flaring agony and searing hot pain with their connotations of fire and flames convey the extent of the pain that he is experiencing. The alliteration of the verbs in I grimace and growl suggests that he is almost animal-like in his response to the extreme pain. The penultimate paragraph ends with a short sentence for impact and to create a pause just as the previous paragraph did. That is the fifth penultimate. That is the fifth paragraph. But I'm stuck. That's a quote. This blunt statement shows the predicament in which he finds himself. The repeated use of ellipses after I grimace and growled, ellipses right there, and I cry out, ellipses, reflects the pause in the writer's thoughts as he tries to work out his plan of escape. The list of verbs, shove, heaving, pushing, lifting, followed by braze and thrust, emphasizes the extreme physical effort that he employs in trying to shift the stone. And there is the use of direct speech and an expl exclamation mark as he exhorts himself to come on and move. That is the direct speech as he exhorts himself. In other words, trying to talk to himself to pull his arm off that particular stuck position. Stresses how he is alone and has no one that he can call on for help. The extract ends on a strong note of finality with the single word sentence, nothing. This underlines the terrible situation that he is in. Uh, this one also marks the end of this particular episode right there. And this is a quick reminder. Uh, in case you've not subscribed and you find out that this work has been helpful, subscribe, like, and also share it with good friends and especially for those who are sitting for these May coming exams. By doing so, you're also promoting this work in one or the other. You're encouraging me to keep on doing what I'm doing. And two, life is spiritual. You share and you so you promote as you also help yourself. Good day for now.